Hey, Jaap Kokman here from Skinner River Fly Supply. Today we're going to do our second episode of how to tie butterflies. Uh, thanks first of all uh, very much for all the positive feedback that we got on our first video. Uh, we're going to hopefully do a lot more like that and um, hopefully you're going to join us for that. Today we're going to have a look at uh, Formula One, a uh, very popular pattern for the lower Skinner region and uh, later in the fall also for the upper system um, it's got some interesting support techniques for the wing that we're going to have a closer look at today. So here we go. So here we have the Formula One, which is our topic of today. Um, the Formula One I designed um, maybe eight or ten years ago and it's designed after the very popular old pattern uh, the popsicle which for the many years that I guided on the Bokley was a very productive fly there and I like the color combination and the effectiveness in a simple pattern like that but I always thought it was a bit of a like a flat pattern with not a lot of action uh, and so I improved the support mechanism for the wing and that support mechanism for the wing is applicable to many other patterns so that's what I would like to have a closer look in today um, so first of all we're going to go through the materials that we're going to need we're going to need a 1.8 millimeter clear plastic tube, a 3 millimeter orange tube, a brass or aluminum bead with a 3 millimeter hole, a cone with a 2 millimeter hole that's going to fit over the 1.8 millimeter cone head. We're going to need some orange marabou, some pink marabou, and some purple marabou. We're also going to use some nutria, and we're going to use some flesh, two types of flesh, some accent flesh in pearl, and some polar flesh also in pearl. Here we go. I'm going to first start by cutting the orange tube on a 45 degree angle, like that. Then we're going to melt a little flange on the end of the plastic tube. Keep rotating the plastic tube a little bit and hold it close to the flame like that so that you get a nice flange on it. Then we're going to slide that flange into the angled tube like that and we're going to slide that in for about eight millimeters. I'm going to show that here on this if I can. Hopefully you can see that good. There's the tube. Here you see the bump of the flange and you see if I hold the point of the orange tube to the end of the ruler that the bump is about one centimeter away from the tip of the orange tube. Okay, then we're going to place that in the tube holder like so, close to where the bump is and this bump is a key thing that makes it very easy to make a stopper for your bead which is going to stop right on that bump. Then we're going to take our fly tying thread like that and we're going to tie that in in front of the bead like so. Clip it off and that's the start and now this bead is locked in. So the first step now is to cut off a little bunch of nutria hair. Make sure to cut it off really close to the hide and then remove 
all the under fur, which is a really fine under fur, makes a really great dubbing, so you may not want to throw that out and uh, use that for dubbing. Then, these guard hair of Nutria are very springy and flexible, and they're great for supporting wings. Tie that bunch in, in front of the bead, nice and snug, and then put your nail against the bunch of Nutria, and I, what I do, I move the vise left and right, like that, to distribute the Nutria hair about 180 degrees, like that. And then I tie that very tight against this bead. That's why I like using a bead instead of a dubbing ball. You can really make this come out at an almost 90 degree angle. Then I do the same step on the other side. I cut off a bunch of Nutria, like so, close to the high. Remove the under fur by gently just plucking on it like this. Tie it in. F tie it in firm. It's pretty slippery material, so you want to make sure you tie it in firm and distribute it over 180 degrees on the other side. So now you will have 360 degrees of distribution of a very springy Nutria material. Do that nice and tight against the bead so that you get a really flared 90 degree support for your material. And that's really the key of this pattern and this you can use for a lot of other patterns to support very soft overing materials so that at the end of the pattern you get a very wide wing like that that stands out and remains standing out and gives a lot of action in the water. So from here things are getting a little bit more standard. Orange marabou. You can fold it back like that, the tip, so that it secures nicely. Bring your thread a bit forward. Do about three or four turns of that marabou, like that. Three, four. And then tie it off, fold it back, bring your ba thread back, make sure that you pluck out any hairs that got caught. If needed you can use scissors. There, clip off the end of your marabou, like so. So that's the first part of your wing. Then the second stage will be pink, right nice against there, fold it back the tip and tie it off, bring your thread forward, and then you can do a few turns of the pink. Like so, tie it off, fold it back, clip off the end, make sure everything is out, good. And at this point we're going to tie in the flash, I'd like to do that before the purple heckle. And for the flash I usually work it like this, I take two strands of accent flash, tie it in and fold it back. Go about a third of the fly across, 
take another two strands or three tie it in and fold it back do that one more time two strands tie them in fold them back next we tie in the polar flesh also in two or three strands and I tie those in between the accent flesh same way one forward and then the other one backward like that and in between there and there's another opening that I tie it in good that's the flash then front ankle tying at the tip fold it back and this one I clip off because you're gonna see that a little bit uneven and this one I only do a few turns I don't like this one to be too thick just so that it's a little bit accented in the front there like so tie it off Clip it off. There. Then do a whip finish. Tuck your line in between there. Grab your line. One, two, three, four, five. And tighten. And then I like to use at this point some super glue which I don't have on hand right now so I'm going to do a little bit of Sally Hansen but I prefer super glue and I dip that a little bit in front of the whip finish then we're going to grab the cone head and we're going to slide the cone head onto the super glue and rotate it so that it's spread over the thread. Hold it on there so that it glues on there. Then at that point I'm going to move my mandrel back so that it sticks out about two millimeters in front of the cone. I hope you can see that. Here is the end of the mandrel. I'm going to lock that in by tightening up my adapter. Then I'm going to cut it off right at the end of my mandrel, like that. And then I have this old wing cutting tool that I drilled some holes in. And I use that to keep the cone nice and snug. Sometimes it wants to sit, slide a little bit forward. So I push this back so that it's nice and snug against the, wi the wing. Then I melt a flange onto the plastic tube with the mandrel sticking out a little bit. So that you get a nice flange that doesn't burn closed it stays open because the mandrel is in there and because I'm holding it at the same time with this it becomes very tight and, and doesn't have any play in, in play in it it could go a little bit further so melt it a little bit for, further like that
And that's the Formula One, named after the famous run on the lower skina. Very effective fly. You can use it with a brass bead or with a aluminum bead as well, if you don't want a heavier pattern. And this is a technique you can use with the wing support for many other patterns. I'll let you see the back of the fly here. So you can have a look at how wide this makes the wing stand out and that remains like that in the water. It's a very nice way to improve the way the fly swims and behaves. And you can see how wide this wing stands out. So I hope you, uh, you learned something from that technique. I use it a lot in all my fly parents and I like the way uh, the fly um, moves a lot better in the water. That was the Formula One. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned maybe a little bit from it. Uh, the wing support method is really nice for a lot of patterns, so try it out. Um, if you enjoyed the video, you can subscribe on the button below and I hope to see you next time. Stay safe.